and happy Thursday, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Keisha. I am always thrilled to have these live conversations with friends from all over who are doing amazing and dynamic things, who are sharing and living in their truths and also enriching the lives of others. And today, I'm so happy to have my friend, who's also an amazing transformational sales coach, to come on and have a convo regarding lead generation. And I know this is something that no matter what kind of business you have, it's really important and particularly important for the creatives out there who may have some obstacles or challenges around sales and bringing in a consistent revenue stream. So we're gonna talk about some things that I'm sure you're going to get a lot out of. So I will bring Lois on right now to join me for the conversation. And this is always a great opportunity to ask questions live so that we can answer them and address them. Let me see. So, yay, hello. Oh my gosh, this is exciting. This is my first time ever doing this. <laughs> oh, yay. I'm so excited. <laughs> How are you? Amazing. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Absolutely. You know, I, I'm so happy that we've, like, gotten closer and over this year. And I think you're an amazing person, a super smart individual and i know that my community will definitely benefit from what we're gonna discuss today so thank you for taking the time to come on yay wonderful <laughs> to be here and thanks for this is exciting this is my first time so i'm glad i figured it out <laughs> oh good yeah it's pretty simple so <laughs> but different right if you've never done it before it's like okay yeah all right, Lois, so what we typically, how it begins is, um, I already did like a little intro welcoming folks. This is episode 15, which I'm like, wow, it's just going. We just keep, um, and the point of having this conversation, the, the intent behind conversations with Keisha is for me to have conversations with wonderful dynamic folks who are my friends, who um, maybe people that I've met online, for the sake of helping to expand the thought process and maybe the perception and perspective of the audience based on our topic. If I have one person that can walk away at the end of this conversation, at the end of this segment saying, wow, I've never thought of it like that before, then I've done my job, you know, I've done my job. And so I think there's a lot to be said for us in this exchange and, you know, in terms of the enrichment, but also absolutely for those who catch us live or the recording. So please introduce yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Oh, hey, Steph. Oh, good. One of my beautiful clients is here with us. So excited to have someone here. This is great. Um, There's also April, too. I don't know if you know April. I'm not sure. But... No. So... Okay. Hi, April. <laughs> and Steph. So yeah, so I've been in sales for 23 years. I've sold in uh, four different verticals and I love sales. I'm one of those weird people who actually even loves the word selling and sales because I've, I've been in sales for 23 years and I've actually also been in health and fitness. And I share that for a reason because what I've discovered is sales and health have a lot of things in common. It's our daily habits, our daily choices and how we choose to invest our biggest non-renewable asset, which is time to accomplish our goals and dreams. And I've worked with over probably 20,000 people since the year 2000 on health and fitness or sales. And it's, it's amazing to me how a lot of people still struggle with yo-yo dieting, for example, and then there's the sales, yo-yo, I call it yo-yo lead generation. And so I've done a lot of studying of the mindset of the time management and really am passionate about lead generation and sales. And I find a lot of people struggle with lead generation and sales. And so I'm hoping to, to, to unpack some of that with you today and, and help share some insights and nuggets of wisdom. 
Absolutely. Okay. So I love how you, you made that connection or that, you know, the similarities between health and sales, <laughs> because it absolutely does come down to our time management and, you know, what our, what our habits are, what our mindset is that helps to direct those habits. And so um, I think for the creative and conscious entrepreneurs and individuals out there, can you please define for us lead generation, like what that is and what that looks like? That's a great point because there is some different words out there. So I, I'm going to probably say a couple other words just to give people another, you know, brain stimulation. So I, I learned the word lead generation right away in my first year in sales, also prospecting. Um, but I, I find that a lot of people don't like the word prospecting. So that's why I chose the word lead generation and lead generation just simply is opening up a door to an, a possibility to do business with you. So it's generating that lead. It's a conversation to mm -hmm. discerning for that prospect. And just same with you, because we don't work with anybody and everybody, right? Hopefully, hopefully not. You find your target market and see if there's an opportunity to serve them through your product or service. So that's the simplest definition. Okay, I love it. It's opening a door for the possibility of someone working with you. And that looks like a conversation most likely. And yes, you all, I always talk about this. We don't, not everybody is for us and we are not for everybody. So <laughs> it is important to have a defined like knowledge of who it is that you want to attract because that helps with, I think how the conversation goes and um, continue Lois, please. Yes. Lead generation. That's one. Okay. Yeah, and then and then also just discerning if you are the type of person that wants to go for the the cold market approach or the warm market approach. And one of the things that helped me when I got into sales right at the age of 21 was uh, a mentor taught me this saying. And because I grew up on a farm in Iowa, this was easy for me to understand. He says, "Lois, you've got to think like a hunter, hmm. but work like a farmer." So there's different industries out there that are more hunting industries. I was actually talking to a girlfriend this week that just started a brand new industry and she's hunting, cold calling all day, every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm more of a warm market approach, working by referral, for example. That's another way to generate leads. Not everyone's for you. In fact, not everyone is gonna work with you, but guess what, it's who do they know that is in their warm market, their sphere of influence that could become your ideal client. And so the way I target um, in lead generation is, I don't care if you work with me or not, but can I earn your respect enough to be your sales trainer, in my case, whatever industry, insert your industry here, um, to be the person you refer to? Because I love doing a business by referral, I'd say, I'd say 80 to 90% of my business leads came through word of mouth referral. And then I was one of those weird sadomasochistic people that actually loved cold calling. And I actually was pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. However, I, because I grew up on a farm and because I love warm, you know, just basically can serve them up on a silver platter leads. Yeah easier to close higher close rates because it's nice to have a lead but guess what most people don't follow up and that's the other thing besides the lead generation activity which is your daily income producing activity oh by the way i can talk about that in a second you want to make sure you have a follow-up protocol because it does take five to twelve touches or follow-ups mm -hmm. close a deal no matter what you're selling Mm -hmm. However, that's why I brought up referrals um, and warm market approach and lead generation is because then people probably won't need to be touched as much. It, and it's not always an assumptive automatic close, but it'll probably save you time and make you more money if you if you take that approach. So that's the other thing for your audience to think about is do you want to do the cold market approach? Do you want to do the warm market approach? Or can you do a little bit of both? And that's where the saying, think like a hunter, because there could be a, not that I like, I'm, I'm not a hunter, you know, in, in, in real life, so I don't want to offend any PETA people out there, but I'm just saying it, you know, think like that a, a lead or, could, or a referral even could drop in your lap and boom, 
you have money today and then you have the warm market approach where you can do your email list building. You know, I love email list building. You can drip on them, right? Follow up and then, you know, close people. I had a gal who she attended 12 of my webinars. I'm a big fan of webinars. That's one of my tools for lead generation. Mm -hmm. And she went to all 12. So it, it took her 12 months to earn, you know, or for me actually to earn her trust of that dripping through those webinars. And it was pretty much the same content every time. And she, boom, signed up a six month coaching contract and we did, you know, a $10,000 transaction. But you know, also depends on your price point too, on how many of those touches and follow-ups you're going to do. So having that lead generation strategy and follow-up strategy, we can, I can stop talking now. We can, we can, we can break with that. Yeah. I want to break down a bit of what you said, because you shared a lot and that's great. And what I want is to um, help the folks. So we started with lead generation and the definition of that, but also what it looks like. So it can look like a conversation. You come by way of referrals. So much of this, you all listening, is about the rapport. And, and another aspect of that is about how you're showing up and the energy you bring and what you're sharing about what it is, what you stand for, what you provide, and why it matters. And so the lead generation can look like a webinar, like doing a series of webinars. It can look like sharing emails to your list consistently. I tell people to choose some sort of schedule that works for you. Don't be sporadic. You know, if it's once a month, then great. Stick with once a month. If you are able to do more in terms of communicating with your audience, then do that. And then I like the third aspect of this, which is follow up. So many people are not good at follow up and that affects the closing rate and affects the money that comes in and it does take it takes um i call it a pleasantly persistent approach with follow up right but i feel like a lot of times if we if we can also go a little bit spend more time here with the follow up lois because sometimes people are like but i don't want to be a bother how often is too much or what's enough if you could um share a little bit maybe on that it's funny because um, I just had this conversation with a client this morning. Um, that same woman actually who hired me was talking about how the phone was feeling like a hundred pounds. Mm. So if anybody knows what that means, it's call reluctance. And so I coach on phone calls. I coach on permission-based social media messaging. I, I, you know, referral. Those are my, my favorite ways to get people to, to at least get into the habit, the daily habit of lead generation and then the follow up. So I have a, a game that I play with my clients because most sales careers are, are, are um, for lack of a better word, either cut short, um, not making the money that they want to be making or that they're worth or they're deserving or, or they just maybe even quit um, is because they don't they don't follow up and they have that fear of rejection. The yeah. fear of rejection is really what's what's causing them to stop. And that's, I won't get into all of that. I, I actually coach a lot deeper on that and, and really working behind, peeling back the layer of the onion of, of the root cause of that. But since I know our time is limited, the, the main key is to understand that rejection is part of the deal. To actually become a friend with the fear of rejection. And if you can, even gamify it. You know, actually, if before you start your lead generation time, whether you're making phone calls, maybe whether you're inviting people to your webinar or you're inviting people to an Instagram live, for example, right? Another form of, of lead generation is mm -hmm. to be able to, to have like a moment where you like connect with your vision, connect with your why, connect with your purpose, your passion, and know that you usually statistics vary depending on who you talk about you're going to hear six to seven no's before you hear a yes so what i tell people is first of all have that understanding mm -hmm. it's okay they're not rejecting you this is not going directly with maybe a, a wound you got from divorce or you know maybe you were rejected as a kid you know from your parents or the black sheep of the family that's again that's more of the deeper work that i do with clients but understanding that it's going to happen so if you go for no there's a book called go for no you've probably heard of it it's a great a great concept you can gamify it you invite <laughs> rejection so if you're going for six to seven no's that probably means you're going to have to talk to at least 10 people so it goes back to mindset managing your expectations taking mm. the ego out of it 
and and and, and knowing the fear is there, but but doing it anyway because you have such passion and conviction about what it is that you are here on this earth to do. You know, you and I we're passionate about what we do and who we serve because we know we can make a difference in someone's lives. And and yeah. so that's where people oftentimes they they poo poo or they have yo yo lead generation like I talked about earlier, and yo yo follow up, um, because they're just they're so afraid of that that rejection and they they they, they lose track of the the logic um, and you gotta do your best to to keep the emotion out of it, expect the nose, keep going for them, invite that rejection, make friends with it, and then you know keeping track also. Um, so tracking your leads. I actually have my my lead prospecting sheet right here uh, okay. this is from yesterday. I did my 37 touches in, in uh, 35 minutes. So even gamifying that with my clients is so much fun because um, if you have accountability, uh, all of those kind of things too, other things to think about how to make that fear of rejection less painful. Oh my gosh. I love it. So yes, fear of rejection of rejection is a big piece of why folks do the yo-yo, why they quit, why, you know, you may do a little bit and be like, oh, I don't like this feeling. I don't want to do it. Or, and it's, you personalize, you internalize the no's, right? And so I also want to say, go for the no's and we're definitely going for the yeses, but you have to know that the no is going to come along with the yes. You could get a yes pretty quickly, I've experienced this, but then you can also get a series of no's afterwards. <laughs> you can get a series of no's and then you can get a yes afterwards. So it really does depend, but just understand there's going to be both. And that's just a part of it. And um, I love what you said about gamifying it. Like you said, how many, for example, you know, 30, 37 touches in 35 minutes. Like, let's just, let's see how many we can do. And I, I have something similar where, you know, I have a list. And then I do my touch points um, with folks. And I wanted to touch on something else because it's like for me and, and you, I'm sure as well, like we're both, we're speakers and I'm a big networker. So I network virtually, I network in person, I do speaking engagements. And with those, especially the speaking engagements, you know, I have, I give an opportunity for folks to schedule a call with me. Yeah. to talk about the branding, right? And so that is considered, I mean, that's a touch point. And then from there, they, they get a gift and then they're in my email list. But beyond that though, whether it's a yes or a no, but particularly a no, you know, I have a system of tracking the people that I meet and have a connection with at each of these places and spaces. And so I put it on a, you know, couple of months, depending on if they're warm, depending on how, the temperature is in terms of their readiness or the energy behind it. But no, no matter what, if we've had a conversation or if they've shown an interest in some way, then I do a touch point. You know, they're on my calendar to check in with and just, and it could be something as simple of, hey, you know, touching base. Um, it's been a couple of months or, you know, a few months since we, we talked. Just curious, are you still exploring ways to enhance your personal branding? You know, and that's a warm, that's a warm, right? We've, we've already, they, it's not like I'm a stranger, <laughs> but it's also, again, given that opportunity and letting them touching base, following up. So what, do you, what are your thoughts on that, Lois? I love that. I love that. That's actually, um, I call it the Kofi sales formula. And my step number four is the, the fortunes and the follow-up. And I call it the eight by eight touch system. Uh, again, I was very lucky, guys, uh, very fortunate when I got into real estate at age 21. I hired a coach and I had a mentor and they, they, they drilled it into my brain that a day without lead generation is a day without work, without working. So I, I was like, OK, I got you. I was coachable and I've been doing that ever since. Mm -hmm. But the follow up was also part of that. Sorry, Kristen just said, hey, I, there's plenty of people coming in and staying around. So this is great. Continue. I'm sorry, Lois. Yeah. So they also taught me the eight by eight system. So what that means is eight touches over eight weeks or in this new email age, if you want to comp compress time frames, you can with email campaigns. Um, it's one of the things that I, that I coach on, but being able to touch people anywhere from four to eight weeks. Some people are a little more 
diligence. I'll even do four to eight days. I, I, so I, I don't have like a one size fits all, but to be able to do exactly what you said, 110%, you've got to have a system in place for your follow up, knowing that again, it takes those five to 12 touches usually to close the sale. So that's why eight is a, is a beautiful, beautiful number because there was a study done. I'll share if I can share a quick story um, why the eight by eight. I, I didn't create that. It was actually from my real estate career, but they did a, a study of a subdivision of, a, of homes. And this was back in the days, even before the do not call list. So this was a long time ago, <laughs> but they sent a, a, a direct mail postcard with a fictitious realtor the person did not exist. We'll call him John Doe for lack of a better name. And there was one direct mail piece sent for eight weeks straight. And when they called on week nine, they, they called every home and of the homes that answered when they asked them, who would you list your home with today if you were to sell your house? And guess who they said? 80%. John Doe. John Doe. Mm -hmm. So that, that drip, that consistency over a shortened time period, even, okay. if, even if they weren't ready to sell, yeah. He was top of mind. So that's what I really, really encourage. Exactly what you're saying, Keisha, is having that system. It can be a combination of emails, phone calls, text, LinkedIn, yeah. and whatever. Um, and, and that's got to be personalized to each person. I don't think any of, in my opinion, any of like the done for you follow up systems, I'm a little suspect because I think it's got to fit you and your personality. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. So, you know, I think, I think essentially that the key to that message that you shared is being top of mind and being consistent. And so, again, that goes to personal branding, y'all. That goes to having clear message. That goes to showing up. That goes to actually doing things, yes, that fit your personality and your style, not just doing things because you see other people doing it necessarily. It's about finding your groove, but ensuring that whatever that groove is, it could be email, it could be every couple of weeks, you know, sending a DM to check in on these, you know, group of folks that you've identified um, that aren't, that do like you at least, right? They like you, they see your stuff, they engage with you. So that's an in. I take that as, okay, they are, they like what I share. And again, remember, it may not be that individual, like Lois said earlier, but who that individual knows. So as long as you're top of mind and you're being consistent and you're sharing content that's genuine, authentic, um, you're letting people know who you are as a person, a human, as well as the professional, then that's all gonna support you and, and being top of mind where people think of you first. And then your work is to you know, do the follow-up and have a system. Yeah. <laughs> And if I can say one thing, this is something that helped me, especially amidst the pandemic, because guys, if you don't know me, I'm, I'm also a homeschooling mom. Um, I have a husband who's actually had a radical transformation is launching a new business. I have done a lot of healing work um, this past year on myself. And that's actually how Keisha and I connected at a deeper level because we have a spiritual connection as well. Mm -hmm. So time is like, Oh my gosh. So time blocking, um, it's step number two in my four step formula. And I've used the 12 week year. Um, in fact, I normally have my book right by me, but it's, it's not here for the moment, but there's a book called the 12 week year. I did get certified in that process. And we talked about the system. Um, it takes time and focus to build your lead generation system to get into the habit of tracking your leads to inputting them into your CRM, however that looks for you. I'm not gonna do that training today, but then also to have a follow-up system that rocks and it doesn't happen overnight. That's also why the yo-yo dieting thing, right? The yo-yo lead generation and follow-up. If you give it 12 weeks and you go all in on one lead generation strategy, I see so many people doing lead generation strategy like homicide to their business because they're like trying to do Instagram and this and that and webinars and podcasting and all the things. Pick one, go all in on it so then you can have more energy and spaciousness and you can, you know, less is more when it comes to lead generation and see if you also like it. You may not like it. Um, and But at the end of 12 weeks, you'll have enough data of tracking your leads, enough data 
of your eight by eight, eight touch system that I was talking about earlier. And you'll know that you know that you know that it works. Um, a lot of my clients, when they do that, oh my gosh, they hit the rocket launch. By the end of the 12 weeks, their income skyrockets. Same thing happened for me in the middle of the pandemic. Um, and most of my clients usually double their income just by going all in on one lead generation strategy and one follow-up system for 12 weeks. And then you can always tweak, um, refine, um, but that's what I see as one of the biggest mistakes people do is every month, it's like the lead generation strategy of the month club. They're, they're trying to throw spaghetti at the wall without tracking huh? and without being focused, laser beam focused for that 12 week period. There's science behind it. It, I was an Ironman triathlete, so I know that I know that I know even training plans. That's how they work so well and how Olympic athletes, gold medalists were born. So same thing. Look at your lead generation and follow strategy like you're training for the Olympics and go all in and be committed and consistent. And yes. you'll be surprised at, at what can happen for you. It won't be feast and famine, roller coaster income. You just got to, you know, be consistent. Oh my gosh, I love it. And um, Kristen says she loves that book, The 12 Week Year, right? Who, who's the author of that book? Yeah, it's Brian P. Moran. He actually, he's so cute. He actually tried to hire me this year. I'm like, sorry, Brian, love you. Uh, <laughs> but I have my own business. Oops, sorry, it's, it's turned. But it's um, Brian P. Moran. And, and um, he's been a great mentor of mine. He's been on my podcast. Um, just great, good people. The book is phenomenal. The, the key is, though, um, like any book, right? You got to apply the wisdom and that's part of what I help out, out inside of my, my webinars. In fact, I have a webinar on Monday about that, that topic. Yeah. So hone in you all 12 weeks, right? That's like three month period. That is a quarter, you know, a quarter that you're like try, doing the one thing consistently, the lead generation thing, and then the follow up thing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Wow. All right, Lois. Well, thank you so much. Like it's, you know, we, we are almost at our time and per usual, I'm always blown away at how much is shared, how many gems and nuggets are, you know, shared this time during the conversation. So how can folks find you, follow you, learn a bit more? Yeah, yeah, my favorite place, um, of course, well, my website, just simply first name, last name, loiscofi.com, and we're here on Insta. I, I, I don't um, focus a lot on Instagram, but I am here on Instagram if you want to connect with me here. Um, my biggest thing is I do have a Facebook group, my podcast, Healthy and Wealthy and Wise. Um, that's my movement. I'm creating a movement for 2023 to help a 1,000 people live their best life through mm sales vocation without compromising their health. So healthy, wealthy, and wise, um, if you go and find me on Facebook or iTunes for my podcast, those would probably be um, the best places. And um, I'd love to love to connect with you guys. Yay. Yeah, and I was a guest on Lois's podcast, Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, earlier this year. So it was, it was fun. It was a great conversation. And um, again, thank you. And you are welcome. Um, there's Vila, I don't know your name, but I know the um, the title there, Vila Mora Storyful. <laughs> Please tell me, I'd love it. Um, yay for podcast. Yes, yes. Kristen also has a podcast. I was a guest on her podcast this year as well. We met in Colorado Springs. So you all, thank you so much for joining us today. Follow Lois Kofi. And until next time, take care of you. Be mindful, be focused, and be love. So thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. -bye.